The quote up there is from Bishop Yvette Flunder, who's this amazing uh, black lesbian bishop from California. And uh, she's quite a celebrity south of the border. She's preached at the White House, etc. Uh, and I was so lucky that when my book came out in 2005, she uh, applauded it and uh, wrote kudos about it and said it was this wonderful work of theology. So, of course, that's not the only reason I have her up there. Um, but yes, Jesus of Nazareth was not a social conservative. He was a radical opponent of state religion and empire who was murdered by an angry coalition for speaking truth to power, stop defiling his name. Today it's reign of Christ Sunday in the lectionary and that's kind of awe-inspiring title and it's a little frightening. It's a little frightening because we're in this era of post-colonialism, we're in this era of post-imperialism, we hope, uh, not quite. We are also in an era of the resurgence of Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, anti-immigrant rhetoric, homo bi and transphobia, of course, racism and misogyny. So when you say, in that context, reign of Christ, it has a somewhat ominous ring to it. And this Sunday, we're confronted with this strange piece in the lectionary that is a Good Friday piece, is it not? But yet, there it is. I didn't choose it. Honest, I didn't. It just came up, and it's a week before Advent. It's a week before Tiny Tim and Carols and babies. Why? It's like the Holy Spirit's calling us to something. This, some of you already know this, this particular passage was one of the reasons I converted to Christianity from being an atheist. Because when I heard this passage, I just couldn't square the circle of my atheism any longer. Because here's my reasoning. Even if this was invented, even if somebody a couple of thousand years ago made this whole scene up, what manner of person could invent those words coming from a first century Jew in a moment of torture to someone next to him that, let's face it, wasn't a good person, was a thief, led a probably terrible life, let's assume the worst possible life, and said to him, as comfort, today you will be with me in paradise. Who could make something like that up? And if it wasn't made up, who could say those words? What manner of human is that? Conversion moment for me. So it means different things, reign of Christ. It means, among other things, for me and for many, our struggle with and our continuing and ongoing struggle with the Christian right. Christian right, the ones that forgive Trump anything as long as he beats up on queers and the planet and women. The ones that came after the United Church in 1988 when we ordained openly gay and lesbian folk. The ones in the person of Fred Phelps and Westboro Baptist Church that used to attend the funerals of those who died from AIDS and say God hates fags. And who actually came after my church when I was at Emmanuel Howard Park and had the honor of performing the first legalized same-sex wedding and said, the lesbian sodomite juggernaut rolls on in Toronto. Wow. I'm telling you, when they said that, and it went out on the internet, we at our church thought we should have t-shirts made with that as a logo. <laughs> the Christian right, of course, is as old as scripture. There's nothing new about it. In scripture, they're Jews, they're scribes and Pharisees, the other Jews that Jesus admonished. There are those stoning the women, woman taken in adultery. 
There, of course, later on, the Inquisition, burning women at the stake for witchcraft. There are the Crusaders slaughtering Muslims, so we are told their blood washed around the Crusaders' ankles in the not-so-holy land. There our own church, the United Church of Canada and others, burying thousands of children in unmarked graves outside of residential schools. And there this month of the Trans Day of Remembrance, the ones who murder trans folk because they can get away with it. And quite frankly, if we're honest and we look in the mirror, some days in our own not so holy moments, our own shameful moments, when we think we have all the answers, that our theology is the only theology, and that who, people who don't read scripture the way we do are just plain wrong, and that our theology is the only way to liberation in the church. The thief admits to Christ who he is. That's what he does. He's open to conversion, open to change his own self. But every generation, we have to rescue the baby from the bathwater, don't we? Quite literally, going into Advent. And the good news is we've managed to do it for 2,000 years, and we're still doing it. We're still here, and we're needed more than ever. I get to stand up here wearing a collar which would have been impossible for most of the last 2,000 years. We're in a church that has pride flags out on the street, unimaginable still for most people in the world. And this last Wednesday, I found myself at Central Tech in an interfaith panel. There was a Muslim, a Jew, an indigenous elder, and myself speaking to a room full of LGBTQ2 plus students about the role of religion in their lives. And most of them were Christian or came from Christian backgrounds. And there was this one lovely young teenage girl who said to me, you know, I know I shouldn't pay any attention to what my relatives have taught me, but I was raised to believe that I would burn in hell. That's what I was taught. And even though I'm rational and I can argue myself out of all of that, I'm still frightened of burning in hell. 15-year-old. Call from the Holy Spirit is a call to all of us still today. So who is the Holy Spirit? Um, I like to think of her as her. I like to think of her as outrageous. She's the one, drinks too much at parties, has uh, hair that, you know, is multicolored, who demands on the TTC that we acknowledge her when we just want to read her book and get home and not talk to anybody. She punctures our most cherished conceits. She's the one that laughs at us not with us. She's the one that calls us all to conversion. We don't want to be converted, none of us do, ever, but she insists, she insists. So if we're truly the ones to stand up to those who use the name of God to condemn the thieves of this world and keep paradise for their own little theological club, whatever that club might look like, we have to ask ourselves some very difficult questions. Do we follow cheap grace, or is the grace that we follow and ask for expensive, costly grace, like in this Lucan passage? If the reign of Christ doesn't mean conquest and imperialism, might it mean what Jeremiah speaks about? Might it mean just hang in there Hang in there. You are needed. You are needed. So this Advent season that's coming up, when some relative quotes to us Leviticus about men lying with men, you know the one, they will, quote back at them this passage from Matthew. 
In one of the translations, it says eunuchs. Others translate it differently. Bottom line is, 2,000 years before Lady Gaga, Jesus said, some are born that way. Jesus says that. Quote that passage to them and say, some are born not interested in heterosexual sex. And some are born different. Some are born sexually and in terms of gender different. Jesus said that 2,000 years ago. We're called to rise up. We're called to resist. We're called to speak out. And we're called to say, this is the kind of reign we speak about on the reign of Christ Sunday. It's not complacent. It's active. It's in your face. It's in line with the Holy Spirit and all she's calling us to do. We demand a revolution, and we particularly demand it this week. On Friday, there is going to be a climate justice rally. We are called to stand up for our planet, for our earth, for those who are excluded, whoever and wherever they may be. We are called to respond when people use Christ in a way that defiles him. We are called to be active. This isn't just let God do it. This is we are called to do it. So faith is moving, it's shaking, it's changing, it's questioning, it's demanding, it's pushy. It's pushy. And just when we think we're comfortable, that's when she comes for us. That's when she comes to challenge us. Because here's the kicker. In the midst of all of that, we're called to love our enemies. And if the Christian right are our enemies, we're called to love them, not just tolerate them, not just abide with them. We are called to love them. How do you do that? How do you love those who condemn others? How do you love them and still resist them? Still resist them. Isn't loving your enemies just another kind of trap to keep us from rising up, from risking, from speaking out, keeping us silent? Of course, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But, it's a holy but, the same Jesus overturned the money changers' tables didn't Jesus? The same Jesus refused to give in to sophistry and said, what is truth? The same Jesus stopped the stoning of the woman. And the same Jesus, in the tale of the Good Samaritan, said, someone from another faith might just be following the call of the Holy Spirit better than you are. Far from masochist, far from quiet, that Jesus was engaged and loving both. This last week was a strange one in my life. I spent two whole days back at Queen's Park, my old political stomping ground, and the two days that I spent there were at the invitation of the Doug Ford government. Yes, I know. One of them was on the Trans Day of Remembrance. My last bill made that law, and it made it law that everyone in the legislature had to rise for a moment of silence for those who had died in the trans community from violence, either from their own hand or from the hands of others in the last year. All parties rise. It's quite moving. And the way I got that bill done was to have a conservative, like so many of my LGBTQ bills, sign on to it. Lisa McLeod signed on to it. So Lisa took us all, there were about 25 of us who gathered, some of them are here from this congregation and around. She took us all out to lunch. There probably wasn't a Tory among us. And she took us all out to 
to lunch. And then the next day, an animal rights bill that I worked for 12 years on and never got passed, looks like the conservative government's going to bring in and pass it. I used to have uh, an adversary called Michael Corrin. I used to appear on his Christian right television show. And I used to debate him on same-sex marriage, on equal marriage, all the time. Well, wouldn't you know that Michael Corrin, just this last month, was ordained as an Anglican priest, got fired from his television show, is a proponent now of equal marriage, and still remains a friend. It's amazing what the Holy Spirit can do. It's amazing what she can do. If we speak across that which divides us, if we speak up, if we resist, if we rise up, and if we also forgive, include, and love even our enemies, the prayer is always the same, isn't it, for thousands of years? The prayer is the one that the early Christians prayed to Saul and about Saul when he was busy arresting and murdering Christians. They prayed that he would become Paul, and he did. He did. The great evangelist. The great evangelist. So that when we're ready to return from violence, to give up violence, when we understand who is standing beside us in moments of torture or suffering, when we get that directional change, when we turn to face the one next to us, whether thief or savior, and we see each other as if for the first time, that holy moment, that beautiful moment of humility, that moment when we get that miracles actually do happen. They do. They happen. They happen. We are proof of that. We hear this Sunday morning. So they are us, we are they. Pray and act, rise up and forgive. Speak out and then be silent. Know we have so far to go and yet we're already there, aren't we? As we approach the beginning all over again, as we save yet again for another year Thousands of years later, the baby from the bathwater that Advent brings to us, this opportunity. Might we begin to recognize the divine in our lives and how close they are right next to us. Keep watch. We're not alone. All the decisions we make, let's do them with love guiding us as if we were standing next to Christ, Christ's self, because we are whomever, wherever, full of promise. Amen.